We're here to talk to you today about the handheld penetrometer. At last. We really are. <laughs> like I know we did a technical spiel on this too, but um, you know, David had just asked. Dave doesn't even know what the heck we're talking about tonight. No, that's true. So I, I do now. You do now. Well, do you though? <laughs> I mean, there's some clues. Um, but I wanted to talk about uh, a case study where you could take advantage of an old technology in combination with a new and emerging technology. Ah, I see. Especially if you have a tough go job going on, like a big job, let's say you got a 200 yard pour or you have um, you know, a, a pour that's going on for days and days and the weather is staying the same and the mix is staying the same, you can use these two tools to help you accelerate that critical path of construction or at the very least give you uh, a chance to take, uh, create some free time in your schedule. Okay. Right? So what are these two things, David? This is a uh, maturity gauge, actually it measures temperature. Right. It's a temperature gauge that can be embedded in the concrete. Then you can, through lab work, relate temperature to strength, which is known as maturity. Yep. This one is a wireless device. There's a bunch of them out there. Um, this is uh, the Geotech Smart Rock. Right. There's also Concure's Next Cure device. Right. And then there's um, another one by Command. There's another one by Fleur. There's a few companies out there, but what's great about this sensor is you put it in your concrete mm -hmm. and it relays that data to you wirelessly. Right. Right? So you don't have to plug in play you can get that data over a large job site, collecting them all, mapping them out, and get that information of how your concrete is gaining strength or the maturity of the concrete, which can be related back to strength. Right. Because um, don't want to confuse those two. No. And wonderful. Makes the job a lot faster. Now, how. And safer. And safer. Now. You don't have to walk out in traffic to get, get your dad. Oh my gosh. And I was the guy who used to do that. Um, this, what is this thing, David? This is the drum roll -da 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 -da, pocket penetrometer. Ah! <laughs> now, normally, is that used for concrete? Or is that normally used for concrete? I don't think so. No. I think we use, use the standard uh, penetrometer. Right, 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 right. Yeah. This is normally used for soils. Ah. So, it can be used for concrete, and you're going to use it in the same method where you're going to apply a constant force until that point of the, what is that called? The penetration tip? There's a better right. way of saying that. Right. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. The needle. <laughs> yeah. The needle has a little line of demarcation there and you record how much force is being applied by that spring to get that needle into that depth. And I see. connect that to your maturity and your strength gain. And your strength. Now, if you've got a mix that's not changing or if you have mixes that are changing, right. you can relate the set time to the mix, cha mix change, especially if you're doing, let's say, a fast track pavement. Right. Now, this is something that we've already talked about, and this is where I wanted to connect these two pieces of information. So this is going to give you strength gain over time, right. and this is going to help you identify initial and final set. Okay. No way, shape, or form is it that exactly this is a field way of doing that. Right. right. And it's handy. It literally fits in your pocket. Literally. Well, they have this lovely, like, holster for it with a belt strap, so you're like... Aha! It's the belt penetrometer. Dude, it's so awesome. It's <laughs> so awesome. So, where I would use these two combined, if I have a large pour where I'm doing this one we jump on either side of this fast track pavement. So we did a video on these quick patches or these fast track pavements right. where we've got a concrete that's got to get uh, 2,500, 3,500 PSI four hours from the water touch cement. Okay. 90 minutes of workability, but right after that 90 minute time frame sets up like a bat out of hell. Mm. So two hours after that, it's at that 35 or 25 to 3,500. Right. And we talked about we've got a total cementitious of 900 pounds per cubic yard, water cementitious ratio extremely, extremely low, and we're using these Tom Cruise cocktail admixtures to get that rubber band effect. You know, we've got 
these different temperature ranges. Are these environmental temperature? Environmental. So this is the temperature of the air. When I when I was working at Lafarge, I had just designed this concept. Right. And my Frenchy boss came in, you know, from Lyon. I know. And he, uh, John Michel. If you're watching John Michel, this is all true. <laughs> meanest, most brilliant guy in the world. And I did, uh, it was uh, 70 degrees, like 72 or 73 degrees out. We were like right around here. So the mix that I did, I chose this one, which was a specific set of admixtures based on the ambient temperature. It was like 71 or 72. Right. We live in Colorado. All of a sudden, these gray clouds came in from nowhere, like this weekend. Right. And it was a snowstorm. It dropped to 32 degrees. It dropped like a stone. But I was set up for this. Right. So the mix fell asleep. And John Michel was like, John, why did I come here? And he was right. Like, a, a poor decision. But I didn't see that temperature change. Now, that being said, when it comes to a setup like this, a fast track pavement, where you know you're going to be in winter, you're going to have some swings between this and this, it's not a bad idea to combine these technologies to set yourself a baseline of what's going to happen in this mix when it's in the ground at these changing temperatures. Right. And with that, could it be argued that you could develop a prediction model of when people can get on top of that slab just based on the maturity and combining it with this? Well, that's really what maturity does, isn't it? Um, it integrates the temperature within the concrete. So if it's affected by the environment, we still, within the integration curve, we still can find our strength point. Right. Right. And as part of that, it's, it's you know, normally people, when you say maturity, they jump to compressive strength. Right. The impetus of this, of this, this video today, or this content, was to show that maturity can be used in combination with other tests to help you save time in the field. Not only is strength important, but when to get on the slab to put that final finish on it right. is also important. And we can use our final initial set times to help us make that decision. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're proponents that there's sort of two things that are important. That's the admixtures and the concrete mix itself. Right. Well, obviously, it has to gain strength and get where you want it to be. But what is that first line of defense? That's that paste. That's that surface. That paste. You know, we can do a lot of work with that mix and with the within depth, but if the surface isn't right, we're not going to get the service life. So we might get the strength. The strength doesn't necessarily give the service life. Right. We have to get that surface just right to seal it up, preserve it from salts, stop that freeze to all, stop all those effects that right. lower service life like that. You know, it's it's so important not to do this job without blinders on. And oftentimes in the concrete industry, we see a new technology, whether it's a chemical admixture, software, or hardware, or hardware that links to software, right. we oftentimes forget about the other technologies that helped us create the foundation of what we're doing today. Right. This is one of the oldest concepts out there. When did when did the original patent come out with the Schmidt hammer? Was it the nineteen fifty the eighteen seventies or something <laughs> no, ridiculous? No, like that. I think it's in the nineteen fifties, I think that's right. Because after at, 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 Abrams after Abrams Law. I mean all this is is a spring and a few numbers etched on a piece of metal. Right. You know, this is concrete internet of things where we take a hardware and that hardware is telling our software and our smartphones realistic or real-time information. And you combine those two, and that critical path, that free time, you've created that free float time. Yeah. You know, there's no substitute for data. None. There's absolutely no substitute for data. You've got to make... Good cheeseburger. <laughs> you've got to make critical decisions, especially in the field. Steel toes, hard hat gray concrete, $10,000 an hour penalty for for o not opening. Yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> there's an incentive to make that decision. Right. It could be higher. I mean, it would, yeah. I, you know, 
Well, there's numbers as high as 100,000 an right. hour. Right, right, depending on where you're at. Depending on the criticality right. of, you know, if you're in the middle of a turnpike or something. You're in Atlanta, Georgia on exactly. the Peachtree Highway. Exactly. And you're two hours late because the concrete fell asleep. Right. You want to know that ahead of time. Right. So, you got data on your clipboard or on your phone or wherever it is. That helps you make the right decision. Amen. And with concrete technologies like this, we're making faster decisions with real-time data. Making, yeah, that's right. We're making accurate decisions Boom. Uh, with real-time data. So what we'll do is we'll include the links for this. This is actually the Blue Rock. I didn't have any of the Smart Rock 2s <laughs> on me. So when you do, if you do order the Smart Rock 2, it's going to have a little lanyard or uh, the temperature sensor. Right. This is the Blue Rock. We are going to put the links to the other companies, uh, the Next Cure by Concure. Am I saying that right? I think so. Or the yeah. Next System. Next System. Sorry, the Next right. System. The yellow boxes. Right, right, right. Yeah. Love, love those systems. These are awesome too. And I thought Command, ha I know they still have the handheld device. You, c you couldn't use your smartphone or your computer, but I thought they had come out with something new. Yeah, that, that sounds right. I we'll put the links below. You guys play place that you make that judgment yourself but let us know if you have any questions we've used almost all those devices even the older toaster ovens you know they came out in the 70s these big boxes with ratty wires going into the concrete oh, we yeah. uh, so let us know if you got any questions or comments don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks